Hello and welcome to Country Sports TV. I'm Ian the Gun and as a gunsmith I took Pat the wife over to America for a couple of weeks and our friend David first day took us round local gun shops. Loads of rifles and pistols and shotguns tended mainly to be pumps and semi-autos. The second gun shop we went into, very interesting guy, had a long discussion about chokes and patterning and British proof marks and European proof marks. But once again, lack of clothing in the gun shop itself, filled with rifles, shotguns and a few air rifles, and along with the stuffed animals on the wall, there was a plaque this year will go down in history. For the first time a civilized nation has full gun registration. Our streets will be safer, our police more efficient and the world will follow our lead into the future. Adolf Hitler 1935. Little semi-auto they had in the shop for sale for home defense of course, we would never allow, be allowed to have one of those in England, would we? He was explaining that the Ken Taffy rifles, a lot of them, were ma actually made in Pennsylvania. This is an Italian copy. Forty-five caliber, and actually shoots like a dream. Then the next day we took a little drive out and went skeet shooting. That's the clubhouse. The rules are stuck on the wall and they've got two or three skeet layouts. And you just turn up, pay your money as a team and just shoot. Nicely struck. That was nicely done. Hello. Oh, smart, I would have brought the Garini up. And we had a break, and the next day drove out of Flower Town in Pennsylvania and drove over the Delaware and down into New Jersey. And we went on the biggest clay layer I've ever seen. So big, you got to drive round in golf carts from stand to stand. Was that first one? One thing I don't like about this is you see targets from other people. That'll fuck you up if the lights are on. Hard. He shot me in the middle of Then we took a little hop on a plane and we flew from Newark to Salt Lake City in Utah and Pat drove as I was navigating all through Utah heading north up into Idaho and then into Montana the scenery was stunning We would drive for a few hours 
and then stop off and have breakfast uh, pancakes and syrup and then as you drove up the hill and you started climbing you then hit the snow the roads are quite dry and it's quite easy to drive on when it's like that and then as you come down it absolutely clears again along the valleys and it's lovely driving it was cold though it was only about two or three that was my attempt to show Pat driving in America this is a little village and for the tourists, they got the old wagons and that lying around. Then we came to a crossroads. We had to make a decision. Keep heading north, or go west across the Rockies to Salmon, and then up to Montana that way. Well, it said Big Hole Valley and we decided it looked nice up through the valley so we took a little trip on the river this river just winds all the way up through the valley and there were salmon or steelheads in the river you could see them swimming up and down big whole battlefield absolutely amazing little place 4th Infantry had a battle with the Native American Nez Price tribe. Absolutely fascinating. The, only the ranger was there. It was closed up because of the bad weather. And it, they, she was just there turning the heating on, cleaning it up, ready for the visitors for when the snow started to clear. Turns out that the Native American, the Nez Price tribe, were baby whacked along the valley bottom by the river and the teepees are there or just the sticks from the teepees are there and the American infantry were held up along the pine trees then a little bit of ice road trucking we then w went higher over the top and we hit snow and ice and then as you come down it absolutely clears and all along the the, the, the trail that we were going on was, was where Lewis and Clark in 1805 travelled up through uh, Idaho and Montana and there's little plaques on the wall uh, on the parking base telling you what they did there and what the historical significance was then you come over the top and you hit Flathead Lake Montana the view is absolutely stunning on all the postcards this view is on all the postcards all over the place I was told if we had more time we could have taken a boat and gone out fishing but we, we only had two days in uh, and then we drove out for a day had a day off and drove out and drove round and there was the National Bison Reserve Bighorn Sheep I think that's a beaver dam but I'm not sure and bison, real bison this was the ranch where they were breeding the bison the big bull is about the size of a Chavalet and the cows are about the size of a Dexter then the next day it was time to head back home and we drove back through and stopped at little places on the way going back to Salt Lake City and this had American old army wagons and these wagons I understand were from the 7th Cavalry famous custard 
Of course, the Little Bighorn is about 300 miles to the east of where we were, just north of Yellowstone Park. This is Trapper's Peak, and it's a flat piece of ground up in the Rockies. And the big companies that bought furs would set up a camp here, and they'd have gambling casinos and saloons and obviously the girls as well and they the trappers would come down out of the mountains and sell the furs to the companies of course the companies would then turn round and sell the trappers all the food and equipment for the next year's trapping and take all their money in the gambling dens and as you're driving back obviously new wildlife white-tailed deer and more big horn sheep they were rutting and when their horns and their heads clicked together it sounds like a rifle going off and it echoed all through the valley There's another plaque for Lewis and Clark. Lewis Clark, there, September the 3rd to the 4th, 1805. And it shows you where you are. And then the last day before we went home, we went to the Philadelphia Cricket Club, and they've got a trap uh, layout, uh, a little clubhouse, little lodge. And this is across the second golf course that they closed down during the winter. So they can only trap shoot during the summer, during the winter. And that was my trip to the United States, a real busman's holiday, and we had a wonderful time.